Welcome to Midpoint, OCC's midweek podcast aimed at helping you connect with last week's message and prepare you for next week's sermon. Let's dive in. Guess who's back? That's right, everybody. It is your girl, Macy, back on the Midpoint podcast (laughs) with my dad, James, your pastor. (laughs) How exciting for the holiday season. I love it. Well, if you're new here, welcome to Midpoint. This is your midweek connection to Orchards Community Church. And on Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas, everyone, by the way, and Happy New Year. Um, but last week on, nice. on Christmas nice, Eve. It's <laughs> a nice nod to the people. Uh, on Christmas Eve, uh, Pastor James here talked through Luke 2 and a part of the Christmas story there. And so today we're just going to kind of walk through that uh, walk through that message there and talk about some things and have some fun. I'm very excited. And, and <laughs> we're doing this live and in person from our living the couch. Room. <laughs> from the couch <laughs> where I'm able to prop my foot up. So if you hear some some doggy noises in the background or some kitties running around or uh, heaven forbid if the UPS guy would show up, oh, th- things no. are going to get really, really crazy. But uh, there, there may be some background Just noise. Just know <laughs> we are not in the studio. Nope. We're live and in person. Yep. And the dogs. (laughs) Could get wild. They get crazy. (laughs) So I just wanted to start off today, Dad, with talking about your tennis ball wrapping story. Yes. Because I think it's so funny. And, like, I literally, I knew the second you started, I also, I I am guilty, guys. I watched church online. I did not come in person. (laughs) I watched church online. So I was sitting on the couch, this here couch that we're recording this (laughs) on right now. And I was watching church. And, like, he started the story of the tennis balls, and I knew immediately, like, before you even got, like, two seconds into the story, I was like, I know exactly you know what story he's going to tell right now. And I was like, no, this is such a good story, and I love it. And so, like, you started talking about the tennis ball story, and really before you finished the tennis ball story, I was like, this story, I love this story, you know, it's about grace and, like, love and second chances, and you finished the story, and you were, like, all of that, yes, and about being salvaged and saved, and kind of went on more in that direction about how it was salvaged and it was saved, and I was kind of thinking about it, and I was, like, I think it'd be fun to think about it and talk about it in the perspective of second chances, because I think that's a really important thing, too, like, your boss knew that you were a good kid, and he w- he didn't want you to get fired, yeah. and so he gave you that second chance. He he knew that you could d- you could do better in the future or next time, and he wanted to give you that chance and that grace um, and that love. And I think that's a good reminder of too is that Jesus does that for us as yeah. well. He constantly is giving us those second chances and that grace and that love. Yeah, H- holistically, that's a, a neat picture and a, and a great story to use for that. And of course. You know, because you know my story with that also, that that guy was one of my dear friends and, and my boss right. for 16 years and actually ended up being my partner and, yeah. and we owned the store together. But And, and Terry passed away a couple of years ago yeah. with cancer, sadly, at a pretty young age. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he just, he was looking out for me and he always mm-hmm. did look out for me. Yeah. And so, yeah, w- that's the thing about second chances. It's not that you earn them or deserve them all the time. Right. <laughs> and that's what makes it great. Grace. grace. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew he did like me. And, and like I say, we developed a phenomenal friendship, but it was nothing but grace that day. <laughs> 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 I hadn't worked there that long, and he saved my bacon. But, yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good takeaway from that story, though, yeah. and I'm glad you, you remembered that one. Yeah. No, that is a good <laughs> one for sure. Yeah, and then kind of just moving on through through this passage that we talked about, you talked about how a lot of stuff back then, obviously, like there wasn't, you know, typewriters and like letters. And was there like messenger pigeons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, did they do that in Jesus' time? Let's do a deep dive into I don't know. the history of communication. Anyway, the, the point of your your point there was <laughs> that that bible verses and like the stories were all spread through word of mouth oral tradition and yeah. and i was kind of thinking about that and i've thought about that before and i think that's just like a super interesting thing to kind of like try to wrap your mind around and like think about is like how did that really work and like like how did some people interpret the stories and tell them to other people and then how did those people interpret them and just I kind of just wanted to open that question up for me and you to chat about a little bit and kind of see what your what your thoughts were on that and and how that worked and how we got to the bible that we read today yeah. well and and some of that and and that is as we were talking earlier that's such a deep dive question you know we'd have to go a long long way but 
there there was the standard practice, you know, these synagogues, the the temples, uh, where scripture would be read. And so, I mean, there, there's one more uh, aspect of, of your question. Even there were people who could read and write, but the vast majority of folks couldn't. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even if they'd had copies of stuff, you know, folks couldn't read it. Right. And and that's why the oral tradition was that important. And there were people who who literally did carry messages from town to town and, and important things like that, mm-hmm. news of the day and stuff like that. Right. But but for the reading of the scripture that normally happened in the temple or in the synagogue Mm -hmm. and people would go and someone would read an old Testament passage. And, and so that was the, the primary way you were going to get that information communicated. And and so, um, again, there were, there were folks who were, I mean, and I guess this still happens today. Uh, everybody has to go to elementary school and, and, you know, then Mm -hmm. high school and and then you can be done. But the people who desire to go on can to secondary education. Yeah. Well, back then, you know, there were folks who were going to rabbi school, but, but there were folks who, if you wanted to excel or move on further in your education, you could. And, but those were the only people who were learning to read and write at that time. And so the, the, I don't know that I can sum all that up, but, but the whole (laughs) idea is, the carrying of the message through oral tradition was super, super important. Right. And it's something, sadly, and not that this is out of God's sovereignty, that we're losing a little bit today because people don't talk anymore. Yeah. People, <laughs> people don't That's communicate true. well. And we rely on a text to try and get us through anything or a snap. And, and those things don't convey emotion and feeling. And, and you know, a lot of times uh, this has happened to you. It's happened to everybody yeah. who's ever got a text. You read a text and you're like, is that person mad at me? You know, yeah. I mean, well, they certainly <laughs> I do it all the time. Yeah. I overthink everything. <laughs> they certainly weren't mad at you, but they just text in a different style than you do even, you know. So yeah. those are the kind of things. Um, there's I can't remember which little Christmas movie it was. Was it Fred Claus? Like one of the you know, the other day where they, they first got email in the North Pole and <laughs> and the one elf, you know, was texting or emailing the other elf and, and she literally walked up to him and said, You can't do that in all caps. It just makes you look angry. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I don't remember that. That's funny. Yeah, so so it's that kind of thing. Do we do we pick up on all those things as we're sharing? Well, that's the beauty of if you sit and have a conversation with somebody, if there's a miscommunication, you can ask them right then. Well, what does this mean? What are you, you know? What are you talking about? Yeah, and, and so and we really, really have um, at, at the sacrificing at the altar of convenience of, of texting and emailing and all these things. We've lost the ability to, to have good conversations yeah. <laughs> anymore. Like a lot of people just don't know how to do it. Yeah, and that's kind of sad. But but back in the day, that was the primary form of communication. And here's the thing that we do know: looking at what we have in Scripture today, even it worked. Yeah, that message did spread. Yeah, <laughs> and so that part's pretty incredible. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I just think that it's interesting to talk it's about. It's a super and interesting question. I'm, I'm tickled you came up with it. Yeah. Like I said, that, that's one you could do kind of a deep dive on. And, oh, yeah. And, and explore the history of communication. But Right. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Anyway, I do. I, I, I'm going to look up later and <laughs> about messenger pigeons. Pigeons. pigeons just and to know when they See <laughs> when those were around. You know, okay, fun little like like side trek here it's just because the pigeons isn't it because you love all things well yes but like (laughs) pigeons we domesticated like humans domesticated pigeons this is a fun story okay it'll take two seconds humans domesticated pigeons and then like used them as messenger pigeons used them like during war times like all that kind of stuff and then we were just like okay we're done you can go now and so pigeons, like, that's why there's so many pigeons and they're always like around big cities and stuff. Cause like humans just like deserted them. And we were like, we don't need you anymore. You can go away. Like you're done. And the pigeons were domesticated. And so they're just like, they're bonded to humans. And so like, have you ever seen, look up a, anybody who's listening right now, go look up a picture of a pigeon's nest. It's sad. Oh, <laughs> like they don't know how to make nests. They like, they're, it's horrible. Pigeons are technically domesticated and then humans were just like no <laughs> we don't want you anymore it's kind of ridiculous anyway if funny, the title funny of little this podcast <laughs> becomes merry <laughs> christmas domesticated pigeons <laughs> then this is your fault <laughs> i love the funny titles this is no this is what i was hoping for this is a good one pigeons <laughs> Okay, well, I'll I'll get off my soapbox about the pigeons. We can be done, but, and we can move. Those on. of you who research, reach out to Macy Joy. You can ask me any questions. Send me questions. Send in next midpoint questions yeah, about, about pigeons. pigeons. <laughs> anyway, I'll get off that soapbox, and we can get onto a different soapbox about Simeon. Oh, back to our Simeon. message. Yeah. 
Um, because I was like, you know, I was talking to dad earlier about this. Um, like I knew Simeon existed and like, you know, knew he was a part of the story because, you know, I grew up with him. And so like, I know a lot of the stories, know a lot about all of the stories. <laughs> so like I knew he was there, but he kind of started talking about Simeon and in this passage and everything. And I was like, really, who is this guy though? Yeah. Like where, where did he come from? Why is he important? Like why? Yeah. I was just kind of like, I get it. And it makes so much sense. Like the prophecies and like the predicting and like, and it all comes true. And like, that's so important, but it's like, why this guy? And like, yeah. why like at this time and like all of that and kind of just wanted to like unwrap that a little bit and talk a little bit more about like maybe Simeon's background and like how that all yeah. comes about. Well, and, and we don't get a ton of background on Simeon or Anna either in there in, in Luke chapter two, but they both play such an important role. And I think it really is more representative. Right. I mean, they, they're just both Simeon and, and Anna represent faithful Jewish people yeah. who had waited a long, long time for the Messiah. Yeah. And I mean, and obviously even beyond their life, because as you go through the the quiet period between Malachi and the, the writing of the Gospels, you know, that 400 year kind of dead period where people just were not hearing from God because of our hardened hearts, because of our you know inability to turn towards him. And so when the Messiah came, he had been promised for, well, if you reference the Isaiah passage, just 700 some odd years, probably 714 years to be exact. Mm hmm. That's a long time <laughs> to wait for something with no evidence that it's showing up. Right. And, and so, you know, the problem with something like that, I mean, we do that today, and obviously that's outliving generations, but but if, if I promised you something for your birthday when you were 13 and here you are 21 and, and you don't get it until you're 60 or whatever, you'd forget that I promised it to you. Yeah. Well, the whole idea is you're not supposed to forget. You're supposed to look forward to those things and live your life in anticipation of that. And that's really, really hard. Yeah. And so, but that's the beauty to return to Simeon's deal. Like the stuff Simeon does seems wild. Right. Seems like, you know, I mean, because you just imagine, and of course we live in a different day and age, but like if somebody brought their baby to church to dedicate him, like we do on our child dedication weekends and some stranger they didn't know grabbed the baby and started and was saying, like, weird, <laughs> saying weird this stuff child about the is baby, going yeah, to we would freak <laughs> out. be like, please get out. You're yeah. being weird. Our security guys <laughs> would be on you. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing would be weird. And, and so, yeah, this is a very, very unique situation. The other cool thing with Simeon, and again, th these are fun questions, babe, because we could go through these for deep a long, dives. long time. <laughs> they, they are deep dives. With Simeon, his incredible obedience to do and trust in exactly what the Holy Spirit told him. Right. Because that was the deal. Like, for him to get that kind of revelation from the Holy Spirit, to say, man, you're not going to die until you get to see salvation. Yeah. Well, he knew salvation came in the Messiah. Messiah, we got a question that was submitted. What does Messiah mean? Messiah, mm. Messiah just means anointed one. Yeah. It's one who is specifically coming for this purpose. And we know Christ's purpose to save people from their sins. So Jesus came for that purpose. And Simeon gets this message from the Holy Spirit. You're not, you're not going to die. You're not going to leave this earth until you see that person face to face. And so, dear goodness, talk about being fired up about, right. <laughs> about I that. I mean, that would be super That's like exciting. incredible I news. get it. I yeah. really do. And then to have the Holy Spirit come back and, and specifically say, hey, now go to the temple. And again, in, in light of what Simeon had going on and, and this promise to, to see salvation, now you got to figure something incredible is going to happen. And like I say, that's... Again, it's a weird story to read, but that's what leads him to literally going and grabbing baby Jesus yeah. away from Mary <laughs> and Joseph. That part of the story is a little wild, but he was doing it out of obedience, and he's doing it out of, of joy and excitement and, and you know just this incredible picture of fulfilled prophecy. And yeah. So that's the great thing. And like I say, if you read later in Luke 2 with Anna as well, you see these people are kind of representative of a long, long waiting, waiting Jewish, Jewish nation. nation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really interesting, actually. See, like, that's kind of what I wanted to get to the bottom of. Yeah. Like, why why Simeon and why is that important? And that, that makes so much sense that it's like, and I feel like Jesus does that a lot. And, like, the Bible does that a lot. Like, chooses, like, one person or, yeah. like, a certain couple people to, like, represent something much yeah. bigger. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great way to, like, understand the story. Yeah. Um, so well, that's really cool. The one thing that I, I and I don't truly, I mean... I don't know where I picked this up or if it was just because it's the way I started reading the Bible because I didn't accept Christ till later in my life. 
like the stories are not just stories. Like, I mean, I understand they're, they're events, they're things yeah. that actually happen. And so I think it's super helpful to try and place ourselves in those situations yeah. and, and ask, what would I do if this and that, you know, and that's the thing where you're like, okay, well then that makes me think about it differently. I process that right. differently. And so, yeah, we're not Simeon. None of us were called to be Simeon. Simeon was, and that must've been wild. Wild. <laughs> so, so, so what would we do? About yeah. that. <laughs> so what would we do if we were in those same shoes? And, yeah. and I, that happens to me every time I read, you know, the, the more traditional part of the Christmas story where it says the angel appeared to the shepherds and they were, you know, terrified and, and every time I read it I'm like and you would be too. you would be freaked out <laughs> because biblical angels okay yeah, just another up. soapbox <laughs> biblical if you like look up they're like pigeons they're like pigeons <laughs> <laughs> no they're not like they're pigeons. not at all but like if you think about like an actual biblically accurate angel like that was actually like it's not like a cute little person no, with no. wings and a halo no, no that's like angels are like these crazy like immaculate like amazing like goddess creatures it, like it, that. it would be <laughs> one of the most you know terrifying and, yeah. and exciting and thrilling and frightening yes mm -hmm. the whole gamut yeah. exactly i'm yes. with you so, so yeah i, I so, get where the shepherds were exactly no and i like and i do i love that you do that because i've yeah. you know i have been listening to you preach for like 21 <laughs> years of my life so and yeah, I, you, you do catch, do that you weren't catching stuff those first no years. no <laughs> <laughs> but you know and you do do that you're like what were these people thinking and like you would be scared too, or like this yeah. would be weird for you, or like how it, how would you would, react yeah. in this situation? Exactly. And like you even did it, um, just to reference your Christmas message really quick, you did it with telling the story of Joseph. Like, and how would you feel if your wife came to you and was yeah. like, well, or betrothed or whatever, yeah. Yeah. was like, hey, I'm pregnant. It's not your baby, but yeah. it's this miraculous thing. You would be you like, would freak no. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like yeah, that we could have done a real, real deep, deep dive into Joseph there and, and what was going on with him. But but that's the deal. We have to remember those aren't just stories. Those are things that actually yeah. happen. So yeah, yeah. that's fun. That to is good of. stuff. That's good <laughs> stuff. Oh, I also I have a note here in my in my midpoint question notes that says you can't predict grandchildren. So <laughs> this is the danger of doing the midpoint with your daughter. <laughs> that was really just supposed to be a funny aside in the sermon. Yeah, well, now you're going to get in trouble for it. Might have for forgot it. that you and I were doing the midpoint together. <laughs> Baby, you know, I just, you know, I won't be able to pick them up very much longer. And so... <laughs> Just, you know. You're gonna have to get on Gavin or Carson about it. I, I'm <laughs> just praying. I, I think, I think I you're a good candidate. You. I'm gonna keep good praying. Good candidate, <laughs> my <laughs> lord. <laughs> it's horrible, horrible. Goodness. Okay. We better go to the next. We're question. going to the next question. Okay. Um, and you already answered our question about the Messiah yes. and just a quick side note. Thank you everyone who sends in questions and writes questions for us. It's very fun and we it's a, a it really so great way to interact and, um, yeah, interact more and kind yeah. of learn more and get your questions answered. So that is super awesome. Thank you for sending in those questions. Um, yeah, I, also, I just kind of had like one, one little thing that we can touch on here real quick dad and then we can we can wrap up so I, I i wrote a note down about how um i think a lot of people don't really think about christmas as like oh yeah that's the time that i need to be accepting jesus into my life and living for jesus you know like and you should because it's christmas christ miss <laughs> like that's like it's the whole in the name it's in the name but i think a lot of you know you do get so distracted and caught up in the other Christmas things. And so I think a lot of people Very don't, yeah. don't really think about that. Um, or like you're like, Oh, that's more of an Easter thing. You know, that's when you, it's really about Jesus. No, this one is too. Yeah. <laughs> like well, it's the perfect time to uh, think about accepting Jesus into your life and living for Jesus. And there's yeah. intentionality with presenting the gospel and then giving people an opportunity to respond. Yeah. And as you and I talked about earlier, we do that at Easter every year, and it is. It's, it's kind of become, well, goodness, you know folks who don't know Jesus are going to go to church at Easter and yeah. they should hear, you know, have a chance. Well, the same thing is true at Christmas. At Christmas. There, there are a lot of people who show up because, hey, my family's going yeah. to the Christmas Eve service. And they want whatever. me to come. They want me to come and I'm going to be there. And, and so it would be a huge wasted opportunity if you didn't present the gospel and give people a chance to respond. Now, as you said, we should do that every day. So it's yeah. not like that that's, you know, kudos to us for doing it <laughs> you know, intentionally. It's something we're supposed to do all the time. But 
as we're walking through passages of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, not every passage lends itself real cl- clearly at the end to going, hey, and remember to accept Jesus. You know, but the Christmas story does. Every part of the Christmas story <laughs> is pointing towards yeah. to, you know, the fact that Jesus came to offer salvation and he's coming again to take everybody home. So we need to make sure we've got it right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so that that is a very clear, I think, you know, chance to to paint that picture. And and again, I, I was real tickled. I talked to several of the folks who got to pray with people at the cross and they didn't have anybody who, who came in professed faith, but they had a bunch of people come and pray who were okay. really, you know, convicted about, especially some of the stuff and, and even the language of the salvage language of being, mm-hmm. you know, delivered and, and Re- recycled. And, and, yeah. you know, and, and if we feel like we're used or damaged, can we be, you know, repurposed for repurposed further for use? And, something good. Yeah. And that's really exciting that people realize, hey, my life is messy, but God's good. And so he can take all that stuff and continue to use me. And, and yeah. again, I hope he's using us as we go out and then individually spread the gospel as, as we are the church. Because yeah. yeah. we're going to have opportunities that folks who don't come to the church building <laughs> Or, or, you know, so those are good things for us to think about. So yeah. Thanks for noticing that. Yeah, That's good. Of course. Yeah. Well, um, let's let's wrap up this episode, everybody. This has been a wonderful time talking about pigeons and angels. <laughs> and there's the title. <laughs> pigeons and angels. We finally got it. We got it. <laughs> That's good. Um, but just to wrap up with you, Dad, what are we talking about next week in church? Next week is super exciting. It's another Wesleyan Brinton ruin. So oh, yes, I will get right. a, a week off of standing on the stage, which <laughs> would be good for my knee. And, and, and Wesleyan Brinton do such a great, great job. They of love it. ruining family weekend. It's <laughs> taking, so fun. Taking stories that we may have heard before in the Bible and not totally understood the, the takeaway. And, and my understanding last time I spoke to him was that they were going to kind of, you know, work through this idea of tackling New Year's resolutions and things that we think mm-hmm. we're going to do brand new for the new year versus what it really means to be new in Christ. Yeah. Because that is a, a radical change from I'm going to, you know, stop listening to, to music 24 hours a day or I'm going <laughs> to stop playing 18 hours of video games or I'm going to try and lose weight <laughs> or whatever, you know. But, but instead, I'm just going to yield my life to Christ because that's a big, big deal. So yeah. I think that's where they're going. Um, they could change it this week because those guys... <laughs> 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 you just don't know, but I, but I think that's the direction uh, they're headed. And so, out. yeah, well, and and God love them. You want to be open to where the spirits lead you on that. So yeah. I think yeah. that's good stuff. And 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 they they do. They put a lot of work into that, and it's they very do. very exciting. And they do a great job, and they're very funny. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and in that, you know, with the the design of having the kids, you know, we've really welcomed, and and it's been really great to have all ages in there worshiping in song with us at the start of services. But now the idea for this week, just, you know, your family stays in there together, worships together, works through the lesson together. I love those weekends. So yeah, I will be in sure. attendance sitting out in a, in a chair with a, a chair right next to me so I can put my foot up and it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> it will be much better for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, if is there anything that we can be praying for this week and the congregation can be praying for this week? That is where heading into this week. Yeah, I, I mean, that, and that's thanks for asking. That's a good one. Uh, we always ask, you know, at the end of the year, uh, just pray that we're uh, being really obedient to supporting the church financially the way that God would desire for us to. A lot of people try to make sure they do get year end giving in before uh, December thirty first because it does allow you to to claim that tax write off if, yeah. <laughs> if you want to do that. So that's a good thing. But, um, you know, we're so, so blessed as a church just at, at OCC and the way God has supported us um, because he's the one who has all the resources. <laughs> he just, you know, allows us to shepherd them and steward them. And, and mm-hmm. so that's a, that's something you always just want to make sure that we're being cheerful givers. And then yeah. obviously that we would be very, very good stewards yeah. at, as a church and use them well for ministry and for, you know, God's purpose to be advanced moving forward. So that's yeah. always a good prayer just that we'd yeah. continue to, to be blessed financially and that we would be great stewards of that, that for resource. Sure. For sure. Very nice. All righty. Well, everyone, I think that is all for this week. This has been so much fun and lovely. Thank you for having me back, everyone. I hope you had a good time. This is, I love, I love this time. No, you do. With, I, they, so they asked fun. me if I wanted to, do, I'm home for Christmas break. They asked me if I wanted to come do midpoint. I was like, obviously <laughs> I want to come do midpoint. I love it. I think this is so much fun. I love talking through the Bible with my dad and yeah. I, I just think it's awesome to, to do this for 
us and you guys mm-hmm. and it's awesome so yeah but join us next week and again make sure to send in those questions um you can email them or text to occ podcast at lewison occ.org um and you can also drop them in the little like drop box There's outside the podcast drop box yeah outside the worship center so yeah and then make sure to join us on services on sundays at 9 and 10 30 and just sunday at 9 and 10 30 this coming week yeah no monday, no monday, monday is new year's day because it is new year's day yeah. but usually like the week after usually that, that yes then there it would will be, be monday, monday at, at 7, 7 p.m <laughs> <laughs> all righty again merry christmas happy new year be well and know that you are so loved by god and our Christian amen god bless you guys